Hello everybody, my name is Matt and welcome to another video where I kind of discuss what's been on my mind. Uh, these videos have been quite random. I usually upload them. I try to do it within a week, but essentially what these are is just me expressing what's been on my mind the last week and uh, you know, hopefully it's helpful for some. If it's not, then it's a good way for me to get my thoughts out on the table. You know, it's a you know, some people like their journal. For me, I like to talk. And what better way to do that than to record it? And maybe it's helpful for some. Maybe some people hate it. And if that's you, if you hate, if you've hated these that I've uploaded, then please don't don't watch them because I don't want you to watch something that you don't like. Um, but essentially, over this last week or so, the thing that's been on my mind the most is this idea of authenticity. Uh, you know, I've grew I grew up. In church, like for all of my life, I grew up in church, and I have seen probably everything in the book that you can imagine. I've seen people go to jail. In fact, there's an old worship leader that I had at one of my former churches that is now in prison. Um, I have seen pastors cheat on their wives. I have seen alcoholic pastors, uh, I, and then on top of that, I've seen members who. You know, whenever they're at church, they they express one thing in their life says another, and you know most of the, most of us have done that. Like I'm I'm not excluding myself from this. I have been guilty of this as well, where I would go to church and put on a huge smile because I wanted everybody to see how great my life was, and then I'd go home and just be horribly broken or deeply uh, depressed or or anxious about things in my life. And I, I've been in those places. Even, even to this day, there are times where I'm in front of people and I feel like I have to put on a, a fake face. We treat it almost, our lives almost like customer service. If you've ever worked in customer service, you know this. But one of the things they teach you is to always smile and to always show joy and happiness because you want the customer to think that you are happy that they're there with you or that they're using your service or that they're talking to you. You want the customer to feel like they are welcome and received with joy and happiness. When in reality, you usually don't feel that way. I mean, you probably could find some YouTube videos. There's countless out there, people that do call center stuff. And you can hear that they're like making their voice sound like they're happy. But then when the call's over, they're just like sitting there like, you know, filing their nails or biting their nails or whatever, and it's just like they're really upset or mad or bored or whatever. But I think that kind of culture has produced some very inauthentic inauthenticity. That's the word I'm looking for. It produces inauthenticity within the church and within Christians and within our world. Like, I mean, this isn't just a, a church problem. This is a world problem where we have told people that in order for them to be accepted, in order for them to be received by those around them, then they have to look, act, or be a certain way. And then we'll even go as far as to say that I have to be that same way towards God, that when I go to God, I have to look a certain way, I have to do certain things, I have to act in a certain way in order to grab God's attention, when, when in reality... That is never the case. And we see this all the way back in Genesis 1, uh, where God essentially, through the creation story, is showing mankind that they are good and that they're loved and that they're valued, not based off of their production or what they could bring to the table, but because they've been formed by God and created in his image. That is the truest thing about them. And that's the truest thing about us even to this day. And yet we feel like we have to go to God with this facade that says, I am something that I'm not. And maybe God will be able to, to maybe God won't be able to see through my BS. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe God won't be able to see through all of the stuff that I'm hiding. And uh, it, it's been, it's been on my mind for the last week or so is, is how often have we influenced that in our culture? Because ultimately, that's where it's the most dangerous is when you're going to God thinking that God is waiting for you to do or be something in order for him to receive you instead of you being just as you are and being received. I wonder how many of us have influenced that culture. Maybe we have 
had somebody come to us just as they are, unfiltered, and we have used that against them in some way, or maybe we've even thought things about them, maybe we've gossiped about them because they were authentic. I know that there have been churches that I've been to. Let me just give you an example. Um, I opened up back in, it was either late middle school or early high school, about a, a porn addiction. And when I opened up about that, some people that I knew within this same group of people would make jokes and things like that using my past um, as the butt of the joke. And uh, it, it encouraged me, or well, let me, let me discourage me to, to be more authentic, but it encouraged me to put on a mask and be someone that I'm not because the moment that I take my mask off, it's going to be used against me. And I feel like that's what the church has been doing in Western Christianity especially, is that the moment that someone removes their mask and says, this is who I really am, then suddenly the church starts to tell them, oh, well, you need to go and and, and clean yourself up. I saw a video recently. Um, it was more of a prank video, but I, it, there was a lot of deep issues that I saw within this video, even though it was a prank video. So there was a, a, a gentleman who is, uh, he's gay, and as a joke, I mean, he did it as a joke, but he was also kind of serious too, Um, but he decided that he was going to call the churches within his area and and basically come out of the closet to them and see if he would be allowed to come to their church. That was the whole idea of the video. And every church that he called essentially said the same thing. They said, well, we don't want you to come on a Sunday, but you're welcome to come into one of our midweek services and and you know, get some things in your life together so that you can actually be able to come to our Sunday services. That's that is what he was said. And even and by the end of the video, even I'm not going to share this video because there was a lot of uh, things that should not be shared on this page uh, and not influence on this page. Um, but the truth was still there. That was that was very upsetting to me. Uh, was that the church essentially told this person that because you are openly gay. You are not allowed to come to our church until you stop being gay or that you stop thinking the ways that you think. And I wonder how many churches that we've been to or that we go to that do the same thing. Maybe they're not as open about it, but whenever you show up and actually express your sinfulness or express your addiction or express whatever, then suddenly the church looks down on you and thinks of you as less of a human being. They look at you more like an animal. I've seen it, and it's destructive. And so I say all of that to say, how, how do we counter this? I think we counter this by signing up for all of us to be authentic. I know that sounds very broad and, and cliche and, and maybe too simple, but I think what would fix this problem of rejecting inauthenticity is to actually be authentic ourselves because the reality is is those who are rejecting those who are authentic are probably being inauthentic themselves. I mean, Jesus said it this way. He said, get the plank out of your own eye before you start inspecting this speck in somebody else's eye. Before you can tell someone to remove the speck, remove the plank from your own first. And I think we can learn from that because there's a lot of times that we tell people they need to get with the program and we're actually further from the program than they are. Look at the Pharisees. The Pharisees would go to people and essentially tell all of these people that they're not in. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, these people are actually the ones that are in. The ones who, if anybody's not going to be in, it's actually you for rejecting those who I have accepted. And so I think that that we can learn from that. Like, what is what are some things in your life that you have been putting a mask over that you won't open up about because you're afraid that you're going to be rejected for it? I think that that thing is what we should be expressing as a Christian body every single week. I have been guilty of putting on a mask myself. Some days more than others. Some days I'm authentic. Some days, you know, I put on a mask depending on when it's convenient or how difficult it is for me to express it. But as I've been thinking over this last week, it has been something that I've really had to repent of and be like, you know what? Even if I get rejected, I would rather be authentically rejected than be inauthentic and then get rejected for not being authentic. You know what I'm saying? And so 
the the solution is be more authentic, and I think that would solve the problem of people having to feel as though they have to wear masks. And if you're going to a church where they're telling you you have to be a certain way in order to be accepted by them or by God, I don't normally tell people to run away from churches unless it's a big issue, but this is a big issue. If it's a theological difference, that's one thing. But if you are leaving a church because they legitimately won't accept you as you, I see that as warranted. Run from that place because that place, I wouldn't even call it the church. Because Jesus' mission was to show the world that he is including everyone in this thing. All types of people from all walks of life, no matter how sinful, no matter how much of an addict they are, no matter how sick they are, no matter what system they came out of, they are accepted in the kingdom of God. I mean, go look at the Beatitudes at who Jesus is blessing. All of the people that it shows Jesus blessing in the Beatitudes are people that society today or churches today would probably reject or push to the margins. And it's, it's, it's sickening. I've been guilty of it too, and I repent of it. I repent of it. But yes, that's my thought of the week. Uh, that's kind of what has been on my mind. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I really encourage you, be authentic. And if you get rejected for being authentic, then know, this is going to sound super cheesy, but I, it's the truth. Know that even if you're rejected by everyone around you, you can be certain that you are accepted by God as you are. I don't care what people tell you. If people tell you that you're not accepted, I would argue that you're actually more accepted than than they, for one, that you're more accepted than they think you are, but you're also more in than probably they are. You probably have more, actually, I believe that you're expressing more faith and more trust in God when you're authentic than when you're not. I hate to use the language of in and out because I think that's the wrong question and it's not helpful. But if we're going to use that language, if anyone's going to be out, it's going to be those who are not bringing in those from all walks of life into this thing we call the kingdom of God. But anyways, that's all That's all that I have to say on the Well, that's not all that I have to say on the matter. I could talk about this for hours, but I want to keep this. Um, I, I'm trying not to make these videos super long, but yeah, hopefully this is helpful. If anything, it's helping me to get something off my chest, but be authentic. This is how we further the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is all about authenticity and accepting those who normally society would reject for being authentic. The church should be doing things differently, and yet right now we're not. But it's our responsibility to start changing that. Let's change the system. Let's start including people that society would say that that's weird. Let's start including people that evangelicalism in the West, generally speaking, would reject. Let's start including those people in the kingdom of God. Then we'll start to see the kingdom of God flourish. Maybe that's the secret to revival this, this term that's been used so often, and yet we don't see it. People are like, revival is coming. But maybe in order for revival to come, we have to start opening our doors more, opening our hearts more. But anyways, that's, that's uh, all for this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, probably next week for something else that the Lord's been showing me. If not that, we'll talk more about this. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and uh, God bless.